It's Tuesday, June 15th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel and it's time for an Oroville update. Let's go up in the Husky and see just how bad things are looking at the Oroville Reservoir, one of Northern California's keystone reservoirs for water storage for the entire state as the drought continues to worsen here in California and throughout the Western United States. South Fork, there's the fire damage from the North Complex from last year. Came over, uh, what is that, Challenge? Yeah, Challenge and Forbes Town. The town of Forbes Town, right over, back over there, was spared by this fire. They were able to get it pretty well stopped here in this drainage. This branch of the South Fork of the Nether River. So water here in California is a complicated subject. A lot of, there's a lot of moving parts here. <laughs> Some fundamental facts are that, wow, look at that fire damage. Let me swing around and you can take a look at it. A fundamental fact is that while California's population has exploded over the last bunch of decades, California's water storage has not increased to meet that increased population and demand. Add into it fluctuations of drought and flood, and you've got a real tough situation to handle. Orville Reservoir and Shasta Reservoir are the two keystone reservoirs for the state of California water storage plan that feeds the well, it not only runs the water down through the delta, that's another issue we'll talk about in a second, but it feeds the uh, canal that, that feeds the aqueduct that feeds the water to Southern California. So a lot of our Northern California water goes to Southern California. Uh, Southern California is much drier than Northern California. Oroville Reservoir captures all this water from all three forks of the Feather River, a huge watershed, which is now all burned up from this North Fire complex from last year. Wow. It's, <laughs> look at that bridge, it's just about, there's just about no water under the bridge anymore. the elevation of Oroville, the top of the emergency spillway is 901 feet. So about 900 feet is your uh, top off level for the Oroville Reservoir. And of course it's it's here, the Oroville Dam is here for several reasons and several competing interests. Number one is flood control. This Feather River Canyon will flood out the communities down here and has for years until the dam was built. Uh, downstream. Number two, it's uh, water storage. Like I said, the two key water storage reservoirs for the state, this here and Shasta. Number three, hydroelectric power is produced by the power plants along the line here of at the dam and downstream from the dam. There's also a series of smaller very old hydro power plants upstream on the Feather River Canyon. Some of the first hydroelectric power here in California is still being produced upstream of Orville, and that was where the famous Paradise Fire got started from a lack of maintenance of the power lines in 
the Feather River Canyon on that old power system. The Paradise Fire, of course, not being too far from here, right up over there toward north. Wow. So, so as you can see, the, the Orville Dam is basically just damming up the canyons of the Feather River. So we are returning to the original getting to see the original canyons, how they looked, or the topography at least, of the Feather River branches. So that means you got to manage this water. you got all these different competing interests. you got farmers, you got fishermen, you got environmentalists, you've got hydroelectric power, and all this needs to be balanced. But the primary balance is with flood control. So you fill the reservoir up gradually over the rain year, and then release it hopefully gradually throughout the dry season. And then refill it again next year, hopefully. But there's so much water in here that we can live several years on several years through a dry period based on rainfall from years ago. We'll show you here on the graph. So let's go over here and look at the data at Lakes Online. See the link below. This shows, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, the last six years of water levels at the Oroville Reservoir. Here we are at 2021, the blue line. So we started out, this goes from January 1st to December 31st, and the end of each year picks up at the beginning of the next year over here. So 2021, this year, is the blue data. We started at about 700 feet, and with record low amounts of precipitation, the water level was only able to raise to about 730 feet, and we're already back down to the 700-foot elevation. Now, they do typically draw the reservoir down to 700 feet or less each year, but not until the very end of the dry season, no, towards the end of November, then the rains start up again and the reservoir typically refills. So remember, the top of the reservoir is right about here at the 900 foot elevation. So they want to manage this water such that for flood control, that the reservoir does not top out until towards the end of the rainy season. Then they'll allow the reservoir to fill up to 900 feet right around June or so and then begin to draw it down each year. Now this data really does a good job of telling the story of when the spillway broke. Let's go all the way back to 2016. Here's a fairly normal year. Uh, way down there on the water level, about 667 foot elevation. The, the reservoir is allowed to fill up gradually to just about 900 feet around May and drawn down. Then the next year, 2016 going into 2017, this is the big heavy rain year, the rains start early in December and the reservoir begins to fill up quickly. So we pick up from right here to right here. At the beginning of 2017, the water levels brought up to a flood control level of 850 feet and it comes up quickly here in January as the rainstorms just keep coming. So they run the spillway to keep the water level right at 850 feet, and then the spillway fails. The main spillway fails, and they have to decide what are they going to do. Are they going to... They First, they have to stop the water over the main spillway. So they stop the water at the main spillway to inspect what's going on. Well, meanwhile, the rains keep coming. The reservoir continues to fill up, and it quickly gets to 900 feet while they decide what they're going to do with the broken spillway. And again, see that that recap from uh, the, the other video from the engineering guy. He does a great recap of on how all this works worked out. So management has to make a call. Are we going to go ahead and run the broken spillway and possibly have all that debris flood out into the after bay and potentially flood the Hyatt power plant? Or are we going to allow the reservoir to fill up and overtop the emergency spillway and, and use the emergency spillway just a little bit 
to relieve the pressure on the reservoir. Because remember, this is an earth-filled dam, and you cannot, under any circumstances, allow an earth-filled dam to be overtopped. So they decide to go for the emergency spillway option, and as soon as just a little bit of water right there tops over the top of the emergency spillway, it begins to erode like crazy, and that's what caused the chaotic emergency evacuation of everybody downstream from the Oroville Reservoir was the fear of the possibility of the emergency spillway potentially failing and releasing a wall of water. So they decided right away, damn the torpedoes, open up the gates, go ahead and destroy the spillway. We need to get this water level down. And that's what they do. And they quickly get it right back down to 850 feet, debris, just floods into the after bay and the Hyatt power plant is only spared from complete destruction by superhuman effort to keep the water from and debris from over flooding the Hyatt power plant. Had they over flooded the Hyatt power plant, they would have been really hosed as far as ways to get water out of the Oroville reservoir. Then they do a, a series of on and off, they decide about 50,000 cubic feet per second on the spillway, they can turn the water on and then turn the water off and minimize the amount of additional head cutting erosion, cutting that spillway back towards the um, head gates. So that's where you see this up and down curve in uh, 2017, keeping the reservoir under control until they get through that heavy rain season and then begin to draw the reservoir down normally. But they also want to draw it down quite a bit because they got to do the spillway repair over the next two years. So 2018 here in Orange, they, the rains are not quite as strong and the reservoir is filled up and it's kept down to below 850 feet so that Keywood Engineering can rebuild the main spillway. Remember they had to build a temporary RCC spillway just in the event that they needed that spillway during this time period. Then once this rain period passed, they were able to finish the repairs on the emergency spillway, or correction, on the main spillway, while at the same time working on the emergency spillway. So then we get to 2019, and we get a fairly normal rain year. Looks like it starts down here around 675 feet or so, and works its way up to nearly full, and then draws down for the season. Now, 2020, by the time we finish 2019, we're still, we still got a good amount of water in the reservoir. So we begin borrowing water from previous years here. 2020, we're starting way up here at about 800 feet. We don't get much rain. It only raises up to about 823 feet, and they got to begin drawing the water down. And then by the time we get to this year, we only had 700 feet to start with. We only raised it up 30 feet, and now we're getting into a huge water deficit. Right now we've burned through a lot of water in a fairly short amount of time and folks are investigating that to find out where did that water go. Do we got our priorities right? Farmers, local farmers I understand are getting 40 percent of their allocated water supply downstream here. But what about the fish? Are they getting a hundred percent? Do we need to balance, do we need to look at the balance of and to environment versus who gets the water first. The big concern down in the Delta is the, the quality of the river and the quality of the water in the Delta. A certain amount of water needs to flow through here all the time as if the dam was never here to keep the river alive and to keep the river healthy. And also a certain amount of water needs to flow through the Delta to keep the salt water from backing up from the ocean as it did for thousands of years without these dams. But as different political factions get more and more power, this balance of power and this balance of resources gets upset, distorted. Now here's the houseboat situation in Orville. I don't know if they call it an emergency order or what have you, but the houseboats are all ended up in a, in a small patch of water left here and even with the extension of the boat ramps, they're running out of capability of getting boats in and out of the lake here at Oroville. So they're having to pull these houseboats out, and there they are all parked up on that ramp up above. And they're also getting parked 
Well, they're getting parked all over the place. And that's an expense that boat owners are having to deal with. And then, of course, the Orville Dam itself and the power plant. Over here is an old uh, project that was abandoned to create another outlet, and over here is the gates that control the temperature of the outlet water from the dam through the power plant and on downstream. And out there are the after bays that warm the water up for the farmers who use in their rice fields downstream here. A quick overview of the entire operation here at Orville, as I said, a keystone reservoir between here and Shasta to take the water from Northern California and send it downstream to the drier part and more populated part of California, Southern California. So there's the Orville Reservoir, the Orville Dam, Spillway, Hyatt Power Plant located there in the dam, and then the Thermolito Diversion Pool, which needs to be kept at a very specific elevation to keep the Hyatt Power Plant operational. That water is then, here's the Diversion Dam, and it can be either diverted straight into the Feather River or into the Thermolito Forebay and Afterbay complexes. There's another little power plant right here in the Forebay. And then the water is warmed in the Afterbay so that the local rice farmers can use the water from here to flood their rice fields. And the water that it's not used in here is released back into the Feather River right here, where the water continues down the stream, the Feather River, into the Sacramento River, into the Sacramento Delta, and then is picked up at Banks, a place called Banks, uh, where it is fed into the California aqueduct system and moved all the way down to Southern California through a series of reservoirs and pumps. Back at the Oroville Reservoir, here's the inlet to the penstocks to the Hyatt Power Plant. And this is a gated structure that, when the reservoir is full, allows you to control the temperature somewhat of the water being released into the Feather River to help keep the fish happy. And these two penstocks feed six turbines, of which alternatively one or two of the turbines may be out of service for repair. And the bottom of this, uh, or the top of this penstock, however you look at it, is about 640 feet. So once that water level gets down to about 640 feet, there's no more water going through the Hyatt power plant. And they then have to rely on the river valve outlet system down here, which is located in the two diversion tunnels that were originally built when the reservoir was originally constructed, which they were train tunnels at the time for moving the men and material through the project to build the dam. And those river valve outlet valves is what allows you to get 4,000 CFS out of the nearly the bottom of the Oroville Reservoir and keep the Feather River alive during drought conditions. Emergency spillway here on my right, all rebuilt. $1 billion rebuilt spillway right here. Fantastic, the most amazing engineering feat in decades. Wow, look at all the... Look at all the terracing and access roads they got here now. Wow! A vast, vast improvement over the old design. So again, 900 feet would be the elevation of the water and a full reservoir. As you can see, the, the tree line up here would be a little bit below that. And this is what it looks like presently at about 700 feet or 200 feet low. 200 feet down from the top. We'll look at the charts and graphs. I think this is considered about 40% of historical average. Just a real interesting look at the current situation here in Northern California at Orville Reservoir. And of course, we covered here on this channel the whole emergency here at Orville with the spillway back a few years ago. That's kind of what put this channel on the map and the entire rebuild of that project. Just fascinating. So we got wa we got uh, winds coming up out of the south today. I'd like to take a look, closer look at this territory over here. Yeah, what a 
does that look like? You, uh, you drop a plane in there real easy? Or is it too steep? There's some signposts there. There's too much embankment over there on my right. A little patch right there. Yeah, you could drop one in right on this two-track right ahead of me here. Climb up that real steep hill and get her stopped right up there at the top of the hill and turned around. Area closed. Huh. Yeah, they wouldn't like that. Not one bit. So that's the situation at Orville. As water levels continue to drop and we're a long way away from any additional rainfall for next season. How will it all play out? Who's going to win? Is it going to be residents, farmers, fish, hydroelectric power, so many different factions competing for some of the most precious air traffic ahead in sight. Commodity on Earth, water. The uh, inlet, the inlet to the spillway is absolutely high and dry.